Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about bugs. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, we, me and my company has, we've been building our MVP for over a year. The last four months we've struggled non-stop with countless bugs. The engineers solve one bug but create another ten. How would you solve this? Well, uh, you basically, I, I, there is no nice way of saying it. You you don't have the right technical leadership in your company, and the engineers who are causing the bugs are most likely well they don't have the technical skills to solve this problem now this isn't uncommon this is uh, not uncommon at all it's a difference of uh, true seniority and uh, pretty much most of the software developers on the market you're in a situation where you've figured out that uh, this strategy that I have a lot of criticism towards, uh, which is what happens in almost every IT company, where uh, the idea is that you have autonomous teams, they can make their own decisions, etc, etc, etc. This comes now and blows up in your face because you have been unfortunate enough to have that perfect combination of incompetence, uh, lack of technical uh, leadership and uh, a uh, complex enough feature domain that putting all the developers in a pile didn't help which is what I would say 99.999% of all companies that I've ever worked with is that's just how they do it literally this is how they do it I have never actually met a CTO or CEO or anybody who, like I'm assuming that's the role that you have in these sorts of companies or I, I don't know but I've never met anybody who ran a startup or a uh, bigger corporation who could solve this problem in any other way that's why uh, <coughs> they hire uh, people who know how to solve these problems usually and this is what you would need to do because like all the bugs and all the issues, like first and foremost, you should absolutely talk to your software developers about this. But the, this is the problem. Reality is, is that if you don't have the right people, nothing you do, like nothing that they say they will do, is likely to work. And so, this is when you need a true senior software developer, and. Here's the kicker. Uh, odds are that you won't be able to find that individual. Uh, in reality, it's not so so easy to find such a person. The best thing you can do is to do what most companies do. Most companies try to hire a person with many years of experience, a you know, a engineering lead, uh, someone like that, and with that person, they're betting on that they the, this person has the right experiences to fix this problem for them and so that's what I suggest that you do the difficult part as you can imagine with this is that if you don't know and you don't ever truly truly know uh, but if you have a hard time figuring out how to determine if this person has the right skill set in order to solve your problem then you're not really then you're basically going to go th then this happens guys this happens all the time like i've seen it many times where companies like keep like they keep on hiring the same take like uh, new technical leaders over and over and over to see if they find someone who knows actually what they're doing and it is rare that you find that perfect combination of technical leadership and hands-on management because it is what is required in these sorts of situations. The most common thing is that the people who who, who do coding and actually have hands-on experience, they're too. That's to say, they they usually don't have the skill sets 
to fix this problem and the people who do have the experience they are hands off for like architects who document things and talk about policies that really isn't necessarily the way to solve the problem it comes down to do you actually understand enough about tech and people in order to set up something that's going to work i mean the basics is to take a look at your ci develop uh, your delivery pipeline if you have a shitty delivery pipeline in other words you don't force your developers to write unit tests you don't force uh, you have a strict rule about code reviews you don't have uh, like uh, proper uh, A-B testing or environments to validate your releases before you push them into production etc etc then these are the areas where you should start but it's sort of the assessment that you have to make because if you've been developing an MVP for a year and you're now seeing that more and more bugs are creeping in it's likely that you don't have these sorts of things and you need to start adding them and this is where it comes into as I said if you don't have the, the this this is what you need to hire someone to help you out with usually the way that a startup or like an MVP development works uh, this is sort of how it should work in my opinion at the very least is that it starts out as something you iterate very quickly on and then at some point you get more and more bug complaints then you get feature requests or things like that and you seem to have arrived at that point and that's why I tell you now is the time to start transitioning from startup mentality, MVP mentality to long-term support and I really hope that it's unlikely but uh, this is sort of yeah it's the it comes with experience these sorts of insights now when you need to take the MVP into something serious the question is can you do that transition have you is like the code so hacked together that you basically have to redo most of the things in order to make this a scalable system and that's what you really need someone who can basically take lead on this because it's as i said it's difficult to determine whether or not that's going to happen with the people that you have in in the organization and far from the majority I would say it is a minority of software developers that you will meet who can shoulder the sort of responsibility that is necessary to make these sorts of transitions that's why these quote-unquote so-called rockstar developers uh, and not necessarily just rockstar developers but people who are rockstars at this specific thing uh, are in fairly high demand uh, I would say that uh, maybe one one in 50 one in a hundred interviews would be an individual who who has the sort of profile that you're looking for but you still there you don't really have another way of going about it i argue so what i want you to take away from this is that if you see that things go from you know a few bugs to most like whenever you're shipping something there's 10 new bugs or like you're causing more and more issues it's most likely due to the fact that you lack that necessary technical leadership the necessary CI pipelines and like the checks and balances that are basically common practice among more serious IT projects in order to do, to catch these sorts of things and this is where it becomes very important for you to have an individual who has a fairly extensive experience with everything from development how to do QA work or like te automated testing, like different strategies that you use, uh, deployments, how you set up your infrastructure to do like uh, either blue green develop um, development. It depends. I mean, it depends a little bit on what setup you ha have. You don't have to go all the way to canary releases or something very sophisticated to have a safe uh, release process. But it comes down to that experience. Do you have someone who knows how to deal with all the steps that take place from computer all the way out into production? Do they understand how to run a team? Do they understand how to make sure that the developers are following best practices? Do they understand, like, do they have all of this experience? And fundamentally, do they have that uh, the ability to actually make that happen within the organization? Because in many cases, you are in a situation where you're either in, you you have one or the other either you have developers who have no way of doing anything of that like that they're basically just code monkeys so like they they just do coding right they don't have any leadership skills or experience in how to solve these sorts of issues and 
that's sort of what you're you, what's common right or you have people who have many years of experience but they also don't really have a good handle on how to solve these problems and in many cases they're architect types these are people who talk a lot create a lot of documentation and policies but that doesn't necessarily translate into any meaningful change for you and your company so what the company usually does in these such situations is that you're basically trying to frame the problem that I just described for you that you're seeing that you need to do the scale up of this thing and then you're trying to you try to find a profile an individual who has the skills who can fix this for you or can help you with that and then you cross your fingers and hope that your understanding of your problem and you, the matchings that you get in um, in the interviews is going to line up well enough that you find such an individual or and if you don't or if that person can't perform basically you keep on switching them out until you find someone who can actually make that journey happen for you have a great day